kind of tired today, so I'm probably just gonna do a bit of messing around in DCS, probably mostly single player stuff. Might do some multiplayer later on, I'll see if any of my usual servers fill up. Um, Growling Sidewinder servers still kind of off limits for me because of performance issues since the patch, but some of the smaller servers like Cold War um, and Just Dogfight, I can mostly play on. Um, I still have issues, but not as bad. Anyway, I'm going to do a bit of messing around in the MiG-15 here. Um, just doing the standard intercept mission that comes with it. I've run through this two or three times already, just to get a feel for the weapons. I found some interesting things about the aircraft, which I'll point out. Now, the fun part is finding this E2 because I have no radar, and there's no AWACS or GCI setup. It's purely visual, so I've got to find him visual. It's over there somewhere, I think. But there's a dead pixel on my screen, which is right about where I'm looking, so... Ah, there he is. Off my left. So one of the first things I noticed, which I hadn't spotted last time I flew this, is if you look close enough you can actually see some um, back faces from the exterior model, because the interior cockpit model and the exterior canopy frame don't quite fit each other, which is interesting. Um, that's one of the issues that um, Leatherneck or Magnitude 3 or whatever they call themselves at this point, uh, that's one of the issues they're working on with the new MiG-21 cockpit. And you can see here that as much work as Belson Tech put into the MiG-15, they didn't quite get that sorted. Still a very impressive cockpit model though, like this is a really pretty aircraft. Really well made. Okay, we're rolling up on this guy. It's pretty hard to see against the ground. Now, I haven't got the sight in gyro mode because I don't know his wingspan, so I'm just gonna guess it, use the old Kentucky windage, go for a burst of 23mm here, bit of stern, there we go, got a hit there, now let's go in with the big gun. It's hard to shoot this from very far out because it has such a low muzzle velocity and a relatively low rate of fire. So I'm going to get a little closer and see if I can find him. The 37mm cannon in the MiG-15 was intended to kill bombers like B-29s. Um, it wasn't a very good weapon against other fighters or even, you know, a medium-sized aircraft like this E-2. The 23s are much more reliable. Although I noticed they suffer the same problem as the MiG-21's gun at the moment, which is the traces don't display properly. So we've got another hit there. Go with the 37 again. There we go. That woke him up. And we'll give him a full burst. I'm not sure if that's forced him down or if he's just trying to get rid of me. Really good visibility out of this cockpit, but the baked on reflections make it a pain to see what's going on in the sunlight. Which is why I really don't like those baked on reflections. I wish that they'd replace them with either something like a cube map at least, or real time reflections. Really, I mean, DCS has so much graphics intensive stuff going on, the performance hit surely can't be much worse than what's already in the game. There he is, he's still flying. Got to do a lot of aggressive trimming on this actually, which is kind of a surprise. Even though it doesn't have the range in air speeds of something like the MiG-21, you still really have to be on the trim a lot.
Okay, he's got one engine out, so he's probably not going to be flying real well. There we go. And I'm out of ammo. Don't get a whole lot in a MiG-15. Also very slow here, so I'm going to put some power on. Head back and land. Now it's interesting to see the progression of the cockpit layout in this thing towards the MiG-19 and the MiG-21. You can see they're starting to put more controls on the throttle and the stick, so a lot of your gun sight related stuff is on the throttle. Um, and then you have different weapons and things on the stick, but they're not quite there yet because your pitch trimmer is this big paddle switch over here. It's not on the stick, it's on the cockpit rail. Now, by the MiG-19, the Soviets had moved that to the stick, and on pretty much every aircraft since, that's where it's been. It's been a thumb hat, like, on my Warthog Hotas. But, not in the MiG-15. I'm not actually sure... I know this thing has roll trim, but I'm not actually sure where the input for the roll trim comes from, if it's, like, a, maybe a paddle on the front of the stick or a paddle on the throttle. There's got to be one somewhere, I just haven't found it yet. Something else I've yet to work out is how you're supposed to steer this thing on the ground since uh, I can't seem to get differential braking working like I would have in the MiG-21. There's probably something I've not set up properly or something I've missed, but for now, I have no idea how to steer once I'm on the ground. So I want to make sure I line up my landing approach pretty well or we're going to end up on a four-wheel driving adventure off the side of the runway. I'd actually really be interested to see if we get a MiG-17 at some point. Um, the two aircraft do have a lot in common, and then that would lead to the potential for something like a MiG-17PF, which would be like a sort of midpoint between this and the MiG-19. I think it'd be pretty interesting to have, and it would really expand the sort of early Cold War and Vietnam era lineup. Um, the Vietnamese made extensive use of MiG-17s, and the Shenyang J-5, which is basically the same aircraft, um, to the point where the Vietnamese didn't make a distinction between the two. They also used the MiG-17 PF, as did the German Democratic Republic. So it'd be pretty cool to have one in-game, I just don't know if we'll ever see one, to be honest. While it is similar to the MiG-15, broadly there are a lot of differences as well. Start dropping the flaps here. You get a real strong nose up tendency when you put the flaps down. I'm going to pull the air brake in, I don't want to get too slow. One thing I will say is I don't really like the offset gun sight that the MiG-15 and 17 have and that also a lot of the German World War II aircraft had. Having something offset in the center of my field of vision I find really distracting and it makes it difficult for me to pick a visual reference for a landing approach. I need some more speed here, I'm not going to make the runway. The engine response time isn't great because it is a very early jet engine. Okay, here we go. A little bit of air brake, just so I don't touch down too fast. Nice and gentle.
Like I said, I have no idea how I'm supposed to steer this on the ground. So we're just gonna have to make do here. Um, there's a lot of controls I haven't found yet. And a lot of other things that still need to be checked up on. But I can do all my basic flight controls, that's all sorted. All my axes are mapped. Um, all my real important stuff is mapped, so at least there's that. Hmm. Wonder what that is. Could that be it? It's a booster of some sort. No, it's not for the. Might be a flight control booster or engine boost, maybe. I should probably check the manual, hey. has signal flares as well. I think they fire downwards out of the belly. So we're not going to see them down here on the ground. But yeah, it's it handles pretty pleasantly in the air. It's not a bad little plane. Just got to figure out a few of the other things. I'm kind of on the fence about the weapon systems in this, but I think that's more DCS's fault than anything. Sometimes, with especially with some of the older aircraft, the, the damage models feel kind of weird. You don't get a lot of feedback. I've noticed this with the Spitfires cannons too. Um, and especially, <clears throat> especially with how the damage models on the World War II aircraft are done, they feel quite... Um, quite stilted, I guess. It feels more like an older game, because instead of things like prop blades bending and, and um, you know, more nuanced visible damage like you have in Isle 2 Cliffs of Dover, or something like Rise of Flight with the World War I planes, you just see entire sections of the wing fall off like we're playing Isle 246, and that's the best they can do, you know, back when that game came out. So I, I do think a lot of aircraft need some serious damage model work, and it means that, say, the, the 37mm cannon on this, when I was shooting at that E2, it, it sounds beefy, and it looks beefy when it hits, but then you just see the aircraft keep flying as though nothing's hit it, and maybe, like, maybe a control surface has fallen off, or maybe there's some visible shrapnel damage on something, but you don't really get the, the kind of feedback you'd expect from a 37mm explosive cannon round hitting something. You know, I, I really think that IL-2 Cliffs of Dover is one of the gold standards for that kind of thing, and Rise of Flight did it pretty well as well. I don't know about the new IL-2, as I haven't actually played it yet, haven't got round to it, but I suspect it'd be the same thing there. Anyway, um, I don't know how to shut this down yet, and I don't really feel like guessing. I wonder. I do wonder. Let's see. No, okay. I just saw the word brakes, and I thought maybe that was something to do with differential braking, but no. We'll figure it out later. I did skim the manual looking for it, but I didn't find it. So yeah, that's a, a bit of a quick fight in the, uh, well not really a fight, it was more like aerial target practice, but a bit of flying in the MiG-15, um, just to get used to how the weapons handle on that, since I couldn't figure out how to activate my guns last time I flew it. Might just quickly check and see if my usual haunts are populated. There's an F5 in Cold War, I might give that a couple, like, give that half an hour or so, um, and see if any more people join in, and if it starts filling up, I'll get in there myself, because I really do want to get some MiG-21 in. Just Dogfight has a bunch of people in it, but they might all be in 1v1 slots. Oh wow, my ping is actually below the threshold. That's interesting. You know what, let's jump on Just Dogfight, let's see who's in here. 
If anyone's willing to actually do some gun fighting, then I'll do that. Um, otherwise, I might just mess around with some other stuff in single player. I kind of feel like doing some more Tomcat practice, just so I can get used to handling that thing again. Because she is quite a handful, and I, I also kind of suspect I have nothing to base this on uh, other than the control layouts of the aircraft, but I suspect very deeply that a lot of how you fly the Tomcat will translate to the MiG-23. Um, they're both variable geometry aircraft, they both have almost identical control surface arrangements. Um, really the, the difference is that the Tomcat has the wider lifting body fuselage, two engines and a twin fin. Otherwise it's very similar. Um, you know, the, the MiG-23 with the wing swept rolls from the tail just like the Tomcat. Unfortunately for me, the MiG-19 isn't on sale yet. Um, I'm not sure when it will finally go on sale, but I'd imagine probably not for a few months yet. I think that I think uh, there's a bit of a pricing thing where they try and leave a new module totally full price for a couple months, just to encourage people to buy it at full price. But I can't afford to do that, so it might be a while yet before I fly the MiG-19, which is kind of funny because I always thought that I'd be flying that before I flew the Tomcat. Um, and that has worked out in the complete opposite way to how I thought it would. Um, not only did I end up flying the Tomcat first, I still haven't got the MiG-19, and it might be another couple months before I manage to pick it up. That's alright, it gives me more time to learn the aircraft I already have. And more time to procrastinate over reading the manual for the MiG-19. I skimmed it, I think I read like the first 30 or 40 pages. And then I was like, yeah, that's everything I need to know, really. Just make the rest up as I go along. Let's see, who's in what slots? Okay, well, the scoreboard's not going to display yet. There we go. Yeah, I don't think anyone's in 1v1s at the moment. Oh, sorry, not 1v1s, in uh, guns at the moment. Got a guy, Air F-14. That's an Air Hornet spawn. Around F-15. Yeah, I might just dip out of here and come back in later if it fills up. So let's do... F-14. If I can actually click the right thing, there we go. Um, let's do the dogfight practice in this again. I might switch over to the um, NTTR missions as well, which gives you missiles and also throws a lot more aircraft at you. I have spent quite a few hours flying the Tomcat in BCS, but it's almost all been sort of cruisy um, missile delivery bus stuff on Georgia at War, where I'm fighting against AI blasting phoenixes and then turning and heading back to either the airbase or the carrier, so I haven't really got into many dogfights, and the ones I have got into have been with missiles. So I need to get a better handle of how to actually maneuver the aircraft. It's kind of like the MiG-21 really, it's the Tomcat's easy to fly if all you're doing is just intercept missions, but as soon as you start mixing in close quarters engagements and trying to use the gun, it becomes really complex. Actually, it is. It does remind me of the MiG-21 module a lot in that they're both very. <clears throat> excuse me. They're very easy to fly, but for you know from the interception standpoint. They're very easy to memorize um, from the pilot's perspective, the startup procedures. Like the Tomcat startup, if you skip all the self-tests and things, is really, really simple. MiG-21 is indeed a log. I just wish that I lived in a real time zone where I could get on the Cold War server more often. Because whenever it populates, it's like 5 in the morning for me, if not earlier.
I'm not sure when we're going to get the cockpit update, but I can't wait for it. It looks really, really good. The only problem is I'm going to have to uh, redo my little personalized cockpit textures. That's alright though. Shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Yeah, um, it was one of those rare occasions where I was able to actually find people on there to fly with. It was really fun. I think that was the one where um, I got to actually kill three aircraft without dying somehow. That mission file specifically seems to be the one I have the most luck with. I've always had really good, uh, really good fights on that, and often without getting shot down myself, whereas a lot of the other mission files that that server runs I'll get absolutely destroyed, unless I have a GCI. <laughs> it really was bait. Yeah, that's what I do most of the time. I end up being bait. Okay. Let's go. Oh my god, I gotta wait for everything to load in. Target, eight miles. Oh, I did not think this through. Hang on. We'll just let the text just load. Okay. I think we're good. Okay, we're on. Why have I got a Master Caution light? That is not reassuring. He's on her nose, Spike! 12 o'clock! Shit, I lost the lock! Fucking canopy frame. It's funny, actually. I know a lot of people really want to have the F-14D, but One roll. the visibility in that is even worse because the HUD takes up so much damn space. 12 o'clock low. Six o'clock high. Twelve o'clock high. One o'clock low. Come on. Twelve o'clock low. Ah. Stutter. I lost him. There he is. Ten o'clock high. Can't even escape the freezes in single player, but at least it's not as bad as it is in uh, multiplayer. 12 o'clock high. Lots of wing rock. She's not real happy about this angle of attack. 1 o'clock low. Here's a chance. He's dead ahead, man. Reach out and touch him. He's ours now. You have him now. I am surprised that didn't kill him. Straight down the spine of the aircraft. That should have at least knocked something out. Runner six. Turn the pilot too. There we go. Bandit is going down. I gotta say, the Tomcat's gun pipper is really stable. Really, really stable. It makes those long shots nice and easy. Um, the thing I'm flying is the F-14B, the thing I just killed is an SU-27. We'll go to land and we will do that. Actually, we'll switch to the um, NTTR mission. Yeah, I don't have the F-18. I would like it, although it's not really high on my list of priorities. I'm more of an old-fashioned kind of guy. I like my Cold War birds. But, um, 
I would like to pick up the F-18 at some point. Like, there's a lot of stuff on it that's interesting, and it, it does everything in the game, but... I could understand why it would get boring if that's all you do. I really like the kind of more stick and rudder style of flying, so this is my jam. It'd be nice if DCS could cooperate and stop freezing on me, but oh well. It'd also be nice if there was world peace and an end to hunger. That's about as likely as DCS running smoothly. Oh my god. Yeah, I'd also rather have the F-14A than the D. I mean, I understand why people want the D. It's a really capable aircraft, and it would also be a nice kind of... This is what we could have had if it wasn't for Dick Cheney being a fucking moron. But, um... The A would be nice for both missions involving Iran, instead of having to just use reskin Bs. And also, it'd be hilarious watching people transition out of the B without realising the, uh... The A's pitfalls relating to its engines. Uh, all those compressor stalls, all those flat spins, it would be so beautiful. Okay, looks like the spoilers are already set. Big freeze there. Jesus. Still coming in kind of fast. So I'll do a bit of a fly over here and then come back around. This thing glides so well. I'm right off the throttle at the moment. I'm basically at idle. And look at it. It's not bleeding speed, it's just happily gliding. Happily gliding. I've noticed as well, as long as you don't lose the hydraulics uh, pressure and lose your flight controls, if you lose the engines in this thing, as long as there's still enough pressure to move the uh, control surfaces, you can easily glide it to a nice field and set it down. It just, it glides that well with the wings out. Now on the other hand, if you take battle damage and the wing sweep computer shits itself and the, um, the motors that drive the, or the, like the wing actuators jam, which has happened to me, and the wings jam at 62 degrees sweep, you have a very interesting time trying to land. Um, it becomes a lot more like trying to land the MiG-21, except even less predictable. Really sloppy excuse for a circuit here, but... This isn't the channel to come to for um, professionalism. This is the channel to come to to watch me flounder about learning things. I learn by doing, usually doing wrong. Pitch ladder is way out of trim. Actually, it's kind of on trim uh, if I sit the velocity vector and the um, plus five degree mark on the horizon, then it's in trim, which is really weird. Okay, here we go. Right down. Air brake out. Back trim. Okay, I'm 
getting a little too low here, so I'll put a little more power on. And overshoot the turn, because why not? Gear, flaps... Speed breakaway. Don't really need it for a land uh, airfield landing. I'm basically just out of flight idle at the moment, and look how well it's gliding. Just need a little more power to get me over the approach lighting, but it's just such a nice aircraft. Such a nice aircraft. have a... shit. Okay, so story time. Come on, man, you're too fast. My left rudder pedal's broken. I forgot this thing only has tow brakes. Not a, like a, um, kinky brake, like most of the Soviet planes have. I didn't think about that until I pumped the right tow brake to slow down there and realized that I just lifted my left pedal out of the cradle. And, yeah. It's fine. Didn't break anything. We're off the runway. It's all good. Nobody has to know that happened. Not gonna do a full shutdown. Don't need to. What a beauty. I'll try the um, Nevada mission now. So this one from memory, if it's the same one I did uh, when the Tomcat first came out, is a mix of MiG-23s and MiG-21s, I think, that you have to fend off. You do have missiles, um, sparrows and sidewinders, but they also have R-60s, so it can be a bit hairy. I think, I think this is the one here. As for that Harrier, Axel, I have no idea what he was doing. I really... I don't get it. He was over the mountains, he was in a Harrier, which is an aircraft designed to hug the ground, and he was conning. Like... I... I saw that, and like, when I, when I made the, the association in my mind, that is the Harrier that the GCI is directing me onto, I was sitting there and, like, you could probably, if you go back and watch the VOD, you could probably see the thought process ticking away in my head. Is he trying to bait me? Like, at first I thought it was a friendly, because I thought, no, that's not a Harrier. There is no way a Harrier would be up that high over the mountains. No, it was him. And then, as I pulled on to him, I, my next thought was that something was behind me. I figured he must have been trying to draw me up over the mountains out of the ground clutter so an F5 could get me. No, it was just a lone Harrier. Of all the planes to be doing that in, like... Even the Vigan I could understand, because the Vigan can at least run. But the Harrier just doesn't have the speed. Like, there's... <laughs> there's no reason to be more than about 500 feet off the ground, ever, in the Harrier. Unless you're doing, you know... I guess if you're doing uh, stuff in Mavericks and seed work, it kind of works, but he wouldn't have been, not where he was. 
That's that's why you have things like pop-up attacks. Like if you need the altitude, you pick it up right before you hit. It's actually one of the downsides about the Cold War server is the, the whole altitude thing. Um, not so much sometimes. Hey, Dirt. Um, but a lot of the time, especially if there's no human GCI on, so you're entirely reliant on the shitty AI AWACS, it can be a nightmare because everyone is flying three feet off the ground, dodging trees, which is a lot of fun, like a shitload of fun, but it also means it's impossible to find anyone. And in the MiG-21, with as bad as its situational awareness is, you get ambushed so easily. All those Harrys at 30k feet with TGP and G like, yeah, but at least approach low, come in low, pop up, and then do your high altitude work. Like, I, I don't get it. Some people, man. Anyway, let's try this. Finally have planes? Nice. I take it you've uh, been enjoying the sale then? Spike, 12 o'clock, dead ahead. Come on, can we pick him up, please? Okay, let's do this. Missile, 12 o'clock, hot, break light! Damn it, I lost the lock! It's alright, so did he. That was a MiG-23. Missile, missile, missile! 12 o'clock! Hot! Break left! Missile! 3 o'clock high! Hot! Jesus. Break left! We have a bandit! Flogger! 3 o'clock high! 3 miles! That was guns. Missile, 11 o'clock high, hot. Bogey, MiG-23, 12 o'clock high, two miles, six o'clock low, one o'clock high, six o'clock low. There he is. Eight o'clock low. Wing rock. 12 o'clock low. Missile, missile, missile. 11 o'clock low, hot. 11 o'clock low. 12 o'clock low. There's one. Head on. 7 o'clock. 6 o'clock high. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock high. Bandit. Fish bed. 6 o'clock high. 2 miles. Flogger. 12 o'clock. Spike. 6 o'clock. MiG-23, 12 o'clock. I don't see it. That's the sun. Fish bed, 6 o'clock. Flogger, 2 o'clock low. Okay, there's one right behind me. Oh, I see him. I saw him. Fish bed, 6 o'clock low. He shot across down there. He's getting in shooting position. He's on our six! Missile, six o'clock. Hot! Go! Didn't end well. See this? The Tomcat has an issue which they have not fixed yet. Where... I'll just... Actually, I'll just pause it where the LOD pops in and out for damaged pieces. So you can see, like, you'll hit someone and you'll see their wings still attached until you get close and you see they don't have one. It's really annoying because it makes it hard to assess your hits on somebody, especially in, like, a guns-only fight. You might think you blew their wing off and you haven't. Also, um, that probably would have been a lot better off if I actually could see what I was shooting at. So we will, uh, whoops. Yeah, okay. We'll try that again.
With a human Rio, you know, I could just have them lock stuff up without my input, but I don't have the coordination to micromanage Jester as well as fly the plane in close combat, so... Ugh, I'm entirely reliant on the um, pilot lock modes, which are not the greatest if you don't have a visual reference to work off of. Spike, right under her nose. It's game time. Missile, 12 o'clock. Hot, break left. Come on, I lost the lock. Missile, missile, missile! 12 o'clock. Hot! Break left! There is a bandit, flogger, um, 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 one o'clock. Four miles. Bogey, MiG-23, 11 o'clock. Five miles. Missile, 11 o'clock. Hot! 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Nine o'clock. Seven o'clock. Twelve o'clock. That's not what I wanted to do. One o'clock. Two o'clock. Eleven o'clock high. I don't see him. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Twelve o'clock low. Nine o'clock. Right there. Slogger. Twelve o'clock. Close it. Fish bed. Six o'clock. Awesome. Oh. Shit. They're so hard to see. Until you spot the smoke trails. Don't know how long I've got flight controls for. There's one. There's another one swinging in to kill me. And they go to flight controls. Just buy a second PC so you can be your own Rio. Absolute genius idea right there. gonna run through this a couple times try and get to the point where I can actually survive it or at least take something with me I'm surprised that sidewinder didn't track it looked like a pretty good shot and he was really close too fight coming our way spike on our nose 12 o'clock One o'clock. Hot. Break left. I lost lock. We've got a bandit. MiG 23. 12 o'clock. Five miles. Looks like it's tracking. 12 o'clock. Tracking, tracking. Twelve o'clock. Splash! Splashed him. Bandit is going down. It's another right there. Missile! Twelve o'clock. Hot! We've got a bogey. MiG-23. One o'clock. Four miles. Don't freeze, DCS. Three o'clock. Uh, 
12 o'clock. Nice. One o'clock low. Eleven o'clock. There is a bandit. Fish bed. Six o'clock high. Two miles. MiG 23. One o'clock high. Spot. Six o'clock. Five o'clock. Right smack on her nose. Ugh. Flash. Flogger. Eleven o'clock high. Fish bed. One o'clock. One o'clock low. Five o'clock high. Jeez, they're all over me. Five o'clock low. He's coming left. Two o'clock high. Five o'clock high. Flogger. Seven o'clock. Fish bed. Three o'clock. Lost track. Big twenty-three. Seven o'clock. Nine o'clock high. MiG-23, 9 o'clock. I see a missile trail. Fish bed, 6 o'clock. MiG-23, 2 o'clock. Fish bed, 9 o'clock low. MiG-23, 12 o'clock. Wow, how is he still flying? Fish bed, 6 o'clock. You can tell that I don't really have the handle of this thing yet because of the amount of wing rock that's going on. Damn it! Oh, we're shit. hit! Left engine's been hit! He gunned Damn. me! Flogger! Three o'clock! <laughs> so Closing. distracted by the guy in front of me. Shit! He's on our six! Do some of that pilot shit! The bandit is going down! Do we still have any engines? Shit, yeah, he's on our six! Do some of that pilot shit! Seven o'clock. Uh-oh. We need to get out of here! He's no, dead. we're fine, Jester. Well, maybe not with that MiG-21 behind me. Now would be a real good place to have some sidewinders left. Not that I'm likely to get a shot. Easy does it. See what I mean about how easy it is to belly this thing if you have to? Ooh, probably shouldn't have belly landed on a bunch of live sparrows, but other than that, um, yeah, if you take damage, it's actually really easy to set the Tomcat down. It slides really well because it's so wide, um, you just skate along on your engines basically. So. As far as planes in DCS go, if you have to belly land somewhere, Tomcat, good option. So I killed all but one of them, that was the last one left. Well, that wasn't too awful. See what other missions we can do.
I really need to wake my feet up a bit earlier. Like, it takes me too long to remember that I should be using the rudder to roll at high AOA instead of the um, ailerons. Well, not the ailerons, it doesn't have any, but the spoilers and the, um, the stabilizers. Um, what do we got? Aerial refueling. Oh, Jesus. That would end terribly. Dact Fox 2s. I think that's against an F-16. I think. I might have to see if I can rip the mission file from that and edit it so it's against the Skyhawk, because that would be interesting, I think. The Skyhawk's flight model is a little bit suspect. It seems like it flies too well, but um, it would certainly be a challenge to fly against that thing, especially guns only. That would be insane. I don't know if anyone could do that against the um, Community A4 as it stands. It's so agile. I should probably get some more music going as well before I forget. I think that mission um, would be a lot easier with a human Rio because they could actually call out targets better for you. Um, I mean, Jest is better than nothing, but a lot of the time he gives contradicting calls. Or by the time he does make the call, it's irrelevant because they're already somewhere else. Yeah. Target, three miles. Okay, we're on. Let's be a shitter and launch on him right away. <laughs> the bandit is going down. GG, easy. Respect the merge, who does that? I think it was only the one guy. Reflight. We'll let him merge this time before we kill him. What is it? Oh, it's an F5 we're fighting against. Makes sense. So he's going to be really difficult to keep eyes on because the F5 is so small. We have a bandit, MiG-28, 12 o'clock, two miles. Six o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Got him. That was a pretty close range missile too. He's down. Oh, you can actually spawn them. Nice. Watch that spike, watch that spike, 11 o'clock. There's a bandit, F5, 3 o'clock low, 1 mile.
Five o'clock high. Ten o'clock. Seven o'clock low. Ah, there he is. You're gonna fire! Coming left! He's behind us! Shake him! Eight o'clock! Six o'clock! Four o'clock high. Oh, I've lost it. I think that's the first time I've managed to put it into a spin. God, they're so hard to see. Let's try again. I think a lot of why Jester's callouts kind of confuse me more than they help me is because they don't have any additional information. Like, you'd expect an actual human to say, oh, he's going under us now in such and such direction, or he's by Target. such and such Three end. Miles. We've got a but Jester just gives you no it's basically. One mile. Which is still better than nothing, but it doesn't really help me a lot because I can't really visualize a clock face while I'm, well, in three dimensions while I'm flying and uh, kind of account for any maneuvers I've made while he's been telling me where the guy is. Twelve if that makes any sense at all. That one looks stupid. High. Six o'clock low. Three o'clock low. Mi missile miss. No shit. Twelve o'clock low. Oh no. Six o'clock oh, high. Guess we're down to guns. Four o'clock high. He's right behind us! He's right behind us, man! Missile, 9 o'clock high. Hot! See, he just called he's right behind us. He was nowhere near. 11 o'clock high. Roger, uh, 4 o'clock. I need to rebind that. I keep hitting it by accident. I'm dropping tanks. Three o'clock high. Two o'clock low. Yeah, there he is. I see him. Twelve o'clock low. Eleven o'clock high. One o'clock high. Come on. Oh, there goes the stall. Keep the nose over left. Eight o'clock. Nine o'clock low. Spike. Nine o'clock. There he is. Six o'clock high. Five 
3 o'clock low. Two o'clock. Ten o'clock high. Three o'clock high. Right on the six. Burn oh my that. God. Finally. Reach out and touch him. Twelve o'clock high. Uh, the AI loves to do vertical loops once you get behind him. Come on, show me some of that pilot shit. Won't save him against the Tomcat. You're right behind him. The bandit is going down. Ooh. There we go. Tell you what, it's the middle of winter here. It's probably at or below freezing outside at this hour of the... Well, maybe not. It's probably like 5 degrees Celsius at this hour of the evening. And I am fucking sweating. It is really... Like, it's hard to to uh, overstate how good you have to be to actually eff effectively dogfight in the Tomcat. Like, you would have to spend so much time on this thing to be able to do that without getting yourself shot down or ripping your wings or getting into a flat spin. I'm not saying I'm good because I just did it. I fluked out there. I have seen maybe one or two well-flown Tomcats basically ever. And when you do come across them, they're really hard to beat. Most people find this thing, um, especially on like Just Dog Fight, uh, pretty clueless. They're as bad as me. Um, some of them are worse than me, but there are good Tomcat pilots out there. There's just not very many. But man, it's rewarding to actually fly. When you do manage to shoot someone down in this, who's in a much smaller, nimbler fighter, you really get a sense of accomplishment. It's just satisfying, really satisfying. Right, let's go check up on multiplayer again. Uh, it's emptied out again on Cold War. How about just dogfight? fight? Started to empty out there as well, unfortunately. Hmm. See, Growling Sidewinder serves relatively low population, but I have so many freezes on that server. I don't really know if it's worth playing on, so I might just do a bit more single player stuff for now. Let's see. Might load up my, um... Actually, no, you know what I should do? I should practice my Tomcat carry landings. Now, I'm not gonna do proper case ones because I've tried it and I need to, uh, I need to actually put the time into doing it properly. So the way you learn to do a case one is you build it step by step. You practice getting the timings right. So it would take me hours and hours to get one right. I don't have hours and hours to do it and it's probably not worth me doing on stream. Um, there's plenty of people that do stream case one practice and they're better at it than me. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fly a really sloppy approach and try and put the thing on the deck without breaking it. That's my first goal, is get on the deck without breaking the plane. And then after that I can kind of uh, smooth out the rough edges. A big part of my issue with carrier landings is I'm too used to landing on a runway. I'm too used to flaring on landing. Um, I'm too used to what the approach should look like for a runway. 
and so it's really hard to get myself out of the mental space of trying to land like I'm on a runway. Which doesn't end well at sea. Quite often um, when I have tried to land on the carrier I've come in way too flat, too fast, too flat, which is not good. Um, I've also had times where I've been way too high over the deck and I've either jammed on full DLC and pulled the power at the last second to try and just set it down and just smashed it into the deck or I've um, had to go around. So we'll try here. We've got our HUD in the landing mode. Hook's already down so that's one less thing to worry about and we're actually we were in autopilot, that's why. We were actually trimmed there. Friendly, Hawkeye, at speed, 11 o'clock, 8 miles. I've already fucked this up. Took me a while to remember how to unsweep the wing. Ugh, why has it gone back into auto? Manual, there we go. No. Don't mind me, I'm just circling around the carrier group trying to figure out what's going on here with my wing sweep. doesn't matter anyway, we're not trying to do a case on we're just trying to land. So where's the carrier? It's under me. Break out. That's my angle. Yeah, it's not too awful.
Please don't freeze now, DCS. Oh my god. Literally the most inopportune time. I swear this game hates me. That was very nearly a ramp strike, but we made it down. So oh, cool, we're the only guys in the squadron who grabbed a one wire. At least we grabbed the wire, Jester. You nearly grabbed the back of the deck. <sighs> okay. Okay, I guess I will, maybe. Just. FPM. The only thing I can think of that's FPM is feet per minute. You're going to have to elaborate. Flight path marker? I don't know. I think it is? Oh, the meatball? Um, oh, no. The meatball in DCS is not quite right. I think it's, it's slightly too low or something. I've heard people talk about this before. Um, by the way, I should note, I, I didn't even think to look at it that whole time. I, like I said, can't get out of the habit of flying like I'm land-based. I was looking at the back of the carrier deck, not at the meatball. I've got to train myself to stop doing that. go off one of the waste cats because I don't trust myself not to hit one of those hornets when I bring the wings out. Shot the shuttle. No, heaps of room. Let's just cheat this.
Yeah, I wasn't quite close enough. I was sitting too far behind the shuttle. I'm good now. Um, right. power on I guess so the spoilers are actually yeah okay spoilers work One moment, chat. Hey, Spaceship Over Glasgow, thanks for the follow. When you try and meme but you uh, don't have the necessary emojis on your bot app, There we go. Oh, DCS did not like being tabbed out of. Really didn't like being tabbed out of. There we go. Same deal as before, not going to do a case one. I know the deck's clear, so I'm just going to do a straight in basically. down. Okay. Flaps. Gear. That's not the menu I wanted. DLC. There we go.
too far out, too low, so I'm going to put some power on and get some more altitude. There we go. Again, I am incredibly sloppy with my carrier landings. I'm just trying to get to the point where I can set the thing down without breaking it. I'll worry about the proper procedures later. Yeah, I can barely even see the mink wall, to be honest. Until I'm right on top of the carrier, at which point it's kind of pointless anyway. Ooh, 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 ooh. That nearly went very badly. One wire. <sighs> okay, well. We survived. We didn't break any of the other planes, we just nearly did. Actually, see if I can clear these parked aircraft off the uh, number two cat. Turn on the controls indicator window. Set the ICLS. I have no idea how to set up the ICLS or the ACLS, which would probably be really useful for someone like me to know. Um, I just do everything the old-fashioned way. Why? Oh, knows what steering helps, doesn't it? That would explain a few things. So this could be very messy, but we'll try it. That was a very unpleasant amount of shaking. I'll just leave it in landing mode. No need to set to take off. Hey, we made it! And the game froze. There we go. Uh.
sign language or what passes for it for connects. Speed. I want to get too low actually, so I want a little more. Flaps, gear. DLC I'm actually kind of pleased with myself because those last two approaches I actually came in at roughly the right angle to hit the landing area Usually, usually I either come in too straight like I'm landing on an old World War 2 carrier or I come in way too far off to the right side and I'm just about landing off the edge of the deck because I always overestimate how angled the uh, flight deck is. I'm not sure I'll check once I'm on the deck. I really love how it chooses like the worst possible moments to freeze. Didn't have enough angle there. Oh! Uh oh. Yeah. Saw that one coming. I ramp struck that. Um. I'll just. pop out and, um. restart the mission so I can check. No! Button, that's the right button. We'll pause. Um, where is my AOA indicator? Yeah, it does. It has the flat line right there. So you've got that flat line, you've got the indexer lights over here, you've also got, um, I think that's rate of climb. I can't remember. I thought the landing mode on the HUD actually had an AOA indicator, but it might not. Um, but then you've got the E-bracket as well, so the E-bracket should be sitting on the, um, this thing. So, yeah, you've got like three different references for it. I'm just an idiot, so I don't actually pay attention to any of them. Find something else to do in a minute. Landing mode has a VSI. Ah, uh, yeah, it has a VSI, it has the E bracket, it has a bunch of other useful stuff, and the total velocity vector, which is something I really wish that the Soviets had included on any of their HUDs because it's so useful. You don't realize how useful it is until you don't have it, especially when you're flying in crosswinds and things like that. Still empty. Emptying. 
Uh, might do. What else have I got? I might do some MiG 21 dogfighting against that Phantom. Um, so, this isn't real great practice because once you get behind him, he just does the AI vertical loops thing, but it does help me get a better feel for. Well, it helps me get back into the MiG 21 because I haven't been flying it as much lately. So, we'll do this for a bit. And I might change games since uh, multiplayer is kind of dead at the moment on the servers I like to play. Soviet plane takes you where it wants. You don't need to know. Yeah, it takes you wherever the ground controller tells it to uh, to take you. If we had an SU-15, that would actually be true. Or if we get the um, PVO version of the MiG-23, they were flyable from the ground, basically, by the ground controller. They would plug in different um, headings and altitudes and things like that, and the aircraft would fly it. The pilot would get cues come up on the HUD to do such and such a thing at such and such a time. Um, basically, the GCI could fly the aircraft with no input from the pilot, pretty much. Pilot was only there, I believe, to operate the throttle and actually fire the weapons. That was it. So this one's a bit of a handful because it spawns me in with the guns not cocked, the radar not in low altitude mode, and various other things not done. And the Phantom is right at like my 1 or 2 o'clock and immediately breaks off and tries to get on my tail. So I've got to try and juggle tasks here and not lose sight of him. Zoom set properly. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh god. I forgot that my flap lever was down, which in this is bound to landing gear. Gonna have to restart that. That didn't happen. Remember kids, whenever you're done flying, always set all your controls back to their default positions because that's what happens when you don't. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Which is a handy skill to have in the MiG-21, because boy does she stall a lot. I didn't see where he went. Big 21 problems. Is it behind me? I don't see him. See, I don't flat spin the F 14 that often, but that's probably because I don't really wrestle the controls around that much. Um, I'm kind of shy with it. I did do it this stream though, one of the very few times I have done it. But this thing, I stall the MiG-21 all the time, but it doesn't really spin. It recovers itself more, uh, more often than not. There goes the stall. Get him to overshoot, hopefully. See, I can't even escape the freezing in single player missions with two aircraft. Because this patch, or like the last patch before the most recent, totally fucked game performance up for me. Totally fucked it. Another stall. I use stalls in the MiG-21 as a way to get people to overshoot or to miss me on gun passes. Just ease up on the controls, she recovers herself. And now we're behind him. 
only problem is he has a lot more energy than me now. He's going to go over the top. It's so nice when they get rid of all this excess canopy framing. Like, I like the way it looks now, but it's really... It's not accurate to the real thing, and it's also really irritating because you can't see shit out in front of your aircraft. Too much lead. Not enough lead. Got a hit there. I think I saw another one there. Wow, he actually broke out of the loop. There's a first. Yep, that is an F4. Yeah, the framing's more than the real 21. So, um, in the upcoming revamp of the MiG-21 module, they're fixing it. Let me just set this thing in recovery mode here. So, all of this, like the sort of webbed bit between the windscreen and the canopy bow, this shouldn't be here. This little bit in the front here is, but this, should all be transparent. This black line, like, around here is about where the uh, canopy bow should end, and then everything between that and this group here at the front should be clear. So yeah, much better forward visibility after the, the uh, MiG-21 cockpit update. Much, much better. But they've got to make it fit to the external model, which is going to be, I guess, probably the more difficult thing. Um, because as I noticed at the start of this stream, the MiG-15's cockpit doesn't line up. If you look like just to the either side of the um, the windscreen arch on the MiG-15, you can see the clipped back faces from the exterior model. Was that an earlier version that they just screw it up? Um, I think it was... I don't know, to be honest. I think it may have just been screwed up. Or it may have been kind of like a compromise to get the interior and exterior models to fit each other properly. Because one of the guys that was on the dev team for this is a real life MiG-21 pilot, so he would know. And he was flying the uh, MiG-21 BIS um, Product 75, which is what this is. So I think it may have been, well actually no. No, because even the exterior model, it doesn't have it. So, yeah, who knows? That's really weird. Is Gunsight Radar guided? Yes, it is. Um, it's also got a gyro mode, which I usually don't turn on for the gun. Um, so the, the gyro on, the, on this is kind of not great. It tends to lag a bit and the radar's minimum range to adjust the gun sight is about 300 meters and you want to be closer than that against a fighter. So basically it's only useful against bombers. Um, when you're fighting something your own size you're best off to just leave it on the fixed net and run with that. And why is my game frozen? There we go. So yeah, if I go... Um, it's on gyro. Switch that up and then range out the TDC. You can see the or you might be able to see the pipa dropping there with range and then if I set the if 
it'll let oh it won't let me set the wingspan because it's on radar mode. But yeah, if I had something locked and and it was uh, oh sorry that's not that's the wingspan's over here. That's the um, angle. My bad. Reading is really hard. So there's your wingspan setting. So say as I was trying to engage a TU95 for reasons, I'd wind this out to um, 50 because it's got a 50 meter wingspan. think and um, then I just let the radar sort out the rest but the other thing as well is against a fighter if it's maneuvering at all you're not going to be able to keep a lock on it like you just won't so there's no point using the radar side on fighters it's basically only good against bombers might refly that and try to make a bit less of a mess of it this time. Okay, get everything set up, zoom out that cockpit view slightly, cock the gun, that should automatically be in the other position, it's bugged at the moment, low altitude mode and we are good. Didn't see where he went, but I can take a guess. walking this close. Oh, there we go. Boom. Is that not high enough? How about this one? Probably also not high enough. That's disappointing. Oh, the game's freezing up on me anyway. DCS problems.
this plane still flying? Holy shit it is. Wow. We'll go fix that. There we go. Random... Is that a road? Yeah, random road that just ends in the middle of nowhere and starts again. High quality mapping. Remember how I said the Tomcat was really easy to belly land? So is the MiG-21, as long as you don't need a telephone pole. Anyway, um, DCS is starting to piss me off because it's constantly stuttering, as it tends to do, so I think I might jump on something else for a bit. Um, maybe naval action? I don't know. I will work it out once I get all this crap off my desk. Preferably without throwing any of it on the ground. Oh no, I'm all tangled up. So there were 17, over 17,000 MI8s built, more than Huey's P-51s and T-6 Texans. Yeah, when the Soviets built something, they built a fucking lot of it, usually. Um, how many MiG-21s were there? There's like over 10,000 MiG-21s built, I know that. And there was also over 10,000 MiG-17s, I think. I don't know about 15s, I'd assume it was a similar number, like a shitload. There we go. About 11,500, yeah. The MiG-21 is the most numerous supersonic fighter in the world by like a huge number. The MiG-23 was pretty widely produced as well, actually. Oh Jesus, even Steam's freezing on me now. Hmm. Hmm. Just trying to decide what to do next. Yeah, I might do some naval action for a bit. Probably won't be on for too much longer. I'm pretty tired. But uh, we'll do a, maybe a couple of uh, fights in naval action. I'll find something to kill, I'm sure. And we can have, like, the least fitting soundtrack possible for Napoleonic era naval warfare. Because why not?
I'm just hoping it's not maintenance time. I think it was about this time last night the servers went down for maintenance. Well, I'm waiting for that to load up. Um, where are we? Here we go. So compare what you just saw of the MiG-21's cockpit with that. That's the new model. They've also totally remodeled the gun sight, although personally I can't tell the difference one way or the other. All I can see difference-wise is maybe two switches and the fact it's got loom paint on it now. But yeah, everything that should have illumination paint on it now has it, which is good. Um, and they've really improved the visibility a lot. So that will be very nice to have. Very, very nice to have. I'll actually be able to see outside better than Tomcats. At least forwards anyway, not backwards. I haven't really got anything on the PvP server yet, so I'm just playing the PvE server for now to get some decent sized ships. So when um, when Dub and the 10x Sailing Club go out, I can tag along with them. But I do want to get some stuff on the PvP server and get into that. Just in the vague hope that I can find someone as grossly incompetent at sailing as I am because even the AI will kick the shit out of me most times. So I play as a Royal Navy on PvP, and uh, I just went US on PvE since that's what Dub and the boys play as. Otherwise I probably would have gone Royal Navy on here as well to be honest. Yeah, the MiG-21 is a lot of fun. Like honestly, I know I'm really biased, but you can't really go wrong with it. It's a cool module, it's fun to fly, it's interesting and quirky, and once you get good with it, you can really catch people off guard. They don't realize how dangerous it can be. Okay, I've got everything on here I need, I think. Bad SA, I can't fly it. Yeah, that's what you, your uh, GCI is for. You don't need SA, you just need someone who has SA to tell you where things are. Eh. But no, it can be frustrating. Um, it can be really frustrating when you don't have a GCI and you're up against things with actual proper radar or just F5s that know how to ambush MiG-21s. Because the, like, the F5 has a lot of the same problems. It has a shitty radar. It has no real SA of its own. It has poor visibility, mostly rearwards. It's not bad forwards. Um, but... The F5 can kind of make up for it because its radar, I think, is very slightly better than the MiG-21s. And um, it, its visibility is very slightly better than the MiG-21s. Um, and it's much better in the horizontal. At least at lower speed. Once you get your speed up, the MiG-21 corners quite well, actually. Yeah, and the RWR is much better than the MiG-21s. Holy fuck. Fuck, the MiG-21's RWR is a piece of shit. It's basically useless. Like, it's so close to being useless, it's not even funny. Radar's useless unless you're already WVR. 
Yeah, but it, I think it detects stuff further out than the MiG-21s does, and I think you can also lock stuff further out. Um, but in either case, like, the MiG-21s radar is hideously short-ranged and badly affected by clutter, whereas the, you know, and, and it doesn't have any BVR capability whatsoever. whatsoever. Its, its longest-range missile is also its smallest IR missile. Um, the F-5 doesn't have any radar missiles, but at least it has a slightly more punchy heater. Ooh, Navy Brig. Oh no, the F-5 doesn't have any BVR, but it's... It's situational awareness WVR is better than the MiG-21s. Like, I've argued with Pom about this a few times. He thinks that the F-5 is worse off than the MiG-21 at close range. I would say the complete opposite. The MiG-21, without either a GCI or at least a wingman, some other pair of eyes outside of his own cockpit, without that, he has no idea what's going on in the world around him. His RWR tells him basically nothing, his radar tells him precious little when it even works, and he can't leave it on because it's alcohol cooled and he runs out of coolant very quickly. Um, he, like, the MiG-21 is blind, totally blind, and entirely reliant on somebody to tell it where to go. When it does have someone to tell it where to go, it's lethal. It is really fucking good when it's actually being GCI'd. Um, all of my best MiG-21 sessions have been with a GCI, because they just talked me straight onto a target, or they've set me up in ambush, and I've easily killed it, often without even being seen because I don't need to turn my radar on until I'm right on top of them, and if I'm carrying heaters, I don't even need to turn it on at all. I just usually do it to IFF them and to figure out where exactly they are to cue my nose onto them. F5 has crappy aspect ability on its Fox 2. Well, the AIM-9 P5s, as far as I'm aware, are all aspect, um, and the R60s, while they're more maneuverable, are also really weak. Like, the R-60 is such a tiny missile that often it takes two of them to kill an F-5, and the F-5 is something that, you know, a stiff breeze will knock its wings off. Um, the R-60 is a good missile, it's just too small. F-20 would be nice. Although it would certainly be the bane of my existence. I have enough trouble with F5s as it is. Like, if I get the drop on them, it's pretty much even odds. If they get the drop on me, I'm toast. Like, there's nothing I can really do against them unless I can, like, unless they're really, 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 really stupid and I can bait them into flying into the ground or a tree, which I have done. Um, I can't really do much against them except run away. And even then, I have to have enough energy going in to be able to build up speed and get away from them. Because the MiG-21 can easily outrun and outclimb an F-5, but when you're already near a stall because you've been in a, a series of turns trying to see them, it's a lot harder. You end up with this kind of funny situation as well, where a MiG-21 and an F-5 get vectored onto each other. I see this all the time on Cold War. I've got a couple of, of videos where it's very noticeable we're both doing it. And the two of them will converge on each other, and they'll be trying to turn in, and they'll start circling around like a ballet, trying to find each other. So you'll see me, and I'm, I'm just cranking around in a flat turn, looking straight out the top of the canopy trying to see this F-5, and then you see a speck on the opposite side of the circle doing the exact same thing. Because neither of us can see each other, but we both know that the other guy is there. It makes for some pretty good comedy. I definitely say it like, 
The MiG-21 is a much more dangerous fighter and a much more capable fighter, but only if it sees what it's trying to kill, and that's a very big if. And I think that's really what balances it out, because otherwise, it, yeah, it would be the better fighter by a long margin. It's faster, it climbs better, it has better missiles in some respects, um, and... Although it doesn't have the, the um, horizontal ability of the F5, it can actually pull some pretty ridiculous turns. It just can't sustain them. Spotting needs to be fixed? Yes, it does. Okay. So, I would actually say instead of that, there's a couple of things they need to do. One of them is certain aircraft, especially with pale skins, like say the TU-95, which is kind of a silvery white colour, they will go from a black spec, and then as the LOD pops, they'll go from a black spec to a silver shape. And that that change from dark to light makes them impossible to keep track of. Because it's like, a, it, it's like you know, looking into the night sky and you see an aircraft light or something, and then it just blinks out. You have no idea where he's gone. He's still there. You may even just be able to see something, but you can't see him as clearly. And if he's moving, you're never going to see him again. That's the same problem. Um, one of the other issues is that once they get far enough away, it doesn't matter if they're a dot or not. Um, if it's a single pixel dot, I can't tell it apart from a piece of dust on my screen or the, the dead pixel just left of center on my monitor. So, the, the sort of best solution I think to this is the way that Cliffs of Dover did it, IL-2 Cliffs of Dover, where if the aircraft is less than about 20 miles away, and it catches the sunlight off the canopy or the wing, you'll see a glint. You'll just see a flash of light. It's not a big flash of light, but it's just enough that you know something's there. And that's realistic. Um, wow, okay, just... That's cool, he's already shooting me as soon as I load in. And I'm... headed into the wind, great. So yeah, that system's really good. What I might do is, um, I have streamed Cliffs of Dover in the past, but it's really hard to do because it's not very cooperative. It runs in like three or four different windows and OBS always grabs the wrong one. But um, I'll see if I can stream some Cliffs of Dover and I will try and demonstrate that. I don't know how well it'll come out on screen, but it should at least be visible. Because that really is, I think, the way to go for spotting, especially in DCS. It seems like the way that involves the least uh, amount of stuff being changed, the least amount of work, so I think if we get anything at all, that seems to be the most credible way of doing it. He's had it himself as well. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it is based on relative aspect in Cliffs of Dover, I would have to actually check, but Put it this way, it seems to be, from what I've seen. It usually is because the aircraft is, you know, it's in a turn and its wings are towards the sun. But for instance, um, I was just today listening to an episode of the Fighter Pilot podcast where they were talking to a Crusader pilot who'd flown over Vietnam and um, a MiG that he, he didn't kill, he forced it down without firing a shot, which is pretty impressive. He um, was saying that the only reason he found that MiG was because he saw just a glint in the distance, about 15 miles away, and it was the glint of the canopy catching the sunlight. Need to try and knock his sails down a bit more, but I also don't want to get myself stuck here. Don't want to be Bruce springsteen running against the wind. Okay, we're about good for elevation there. 
shit broadside though. Okay, my left side guns are still chain shot, so we'll give him another bunch of that into his sails and hopefully slow him down a little more. The brig is slightly faster than the rattlesnake by default, so I do want to try and knock a few pegs off his uh, speed. If I can hit his fucking sails, that would be a good start. Oh my god. There we go. There's some hits. What I'd really love to do is demast him, but it just takes too much time and effort, honestly. Yeah, exactly. And so, because of that as well, I wouldn't even be mad if they they just abstracted it instead of making it, you know, based off the game's lighting engine. It'd probably be better optimized to do that too. But um, as long as it made sense, like as long as it wasn't a constant strobing in the distance, we just need something. Anything, really. I really don't want this guy getting up behind me. It's easier to control the engagement when you're trailing someone, so... He has the weather gauge. And there's not really a whole lot I can do. I might load chain on both sides again. And just try and slow him down a little more. What I want is for him to continue straight ahead, or turn right, but he's just going to directly follow me, I think, unfortunately. Pick up some speed. If I can get him front on, with a broadside of chain shot, that will really fuck him up, but it doesn't look like he's going to let me. On the other hand, that turn was really well timed to make his shells just ricochet off my planking. There we go, there's a few good hits. Four shots of, uh, of four rounds of chain shot, so better make them count. Yeah, I got some hits out of that. He's down to 62% sails right now, so he's going to be really struggling to maneuver. Which makes my life a lot easier. Unfortunately, he's still behind me. And it's going to be really hard, if not impossible, to try and force an overshoot here. Sounds like DCS, doesn't it? And there are a lot of parallels. You want to be behind the other guy, because it lets you dictate the terms of the engagement. So quite often, uh, not so much in the square rigged ships because they just don't have the agility to do it and they can't turn into the wind without, you know, bad things happening. Um, but in the smaller ships like the yacht, the cutter, the lynx, um, quite often I will weave back and forth behind an enemy ship because it's very difficult for them to hit me there and I can pretty much just sit on their ass and deliver broadside after broadside into their stern which kills all their crew. 
In this, I've got to be more careful that I don't do exactly what I just did. 500 IQ. There we go. You can get out of that, you've just got to do some fiddly manual sail control and it takes a little while. I'm going to go ahead and fix my planking. He is kind of getting the upper hand here. To aim a little higher, I think. It's really hard to see where your shots are hitting because of all the smoke. It's really something getting into a big battle between capital ships, just watching them broadside each other at point blank range, it's incredible. It really is something else. The um, big Spanish ship that I can never remember the name of and the victory broadsiding each other at close range is unbelievable. Oh, oh, he's done it. He's done it. He's overshot. Now we have some fun. And most of that went into the water, but we did get a few hits there. So he's either going to have to reverse his turn right, which he's doing, or he would have to continue around to the left and Springsteen himself. Quite often the AI will do that, the AI really isn't very smart at the moment, but um, in this case he's going to loop back around and give me another good broadside here. If he keeps doing this I'm going to go to Grape Shot and just grape the fuck out of his crew. I slowed down a little too much there. Yeah. Yeah, you get behind them and, uh, and grape the crew. Something, something, TOS. Seriously though, if you shoot down the stern with grape shot, it absolutely fucking demolishes them. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and load it. Oh, that's right, I have fucking double shot and fucking double charge now. I forgot. Oh, I need to use those. Not on this guy, probably, but on something. I forgot that I picked them up. I actually get a decent amount of this stuff too, damn. Oh, you poor sweet summer child. Didn't quite have the angle there, so only got two of his crew, but he's just headed himself, so have fun with that, buddy. OK, 
Okay, he's going to turn back around. Which is going to put him behind me again. I didn't really think that through. It's fine. Does the game have looting mechanics? It sure does. It has boarding mechanics, which I will probably use if I can get his crew knocked down enough. Yeah, I'm too far out for grape shot now. It's not really going to do much, so I'll just fire what's in the guns. And we'll go... Let's go double shot. Just for shits and giggles. I haven't used it for literally years when I first started playing this game, so... I'm going to see what it does. Um, if you straight up sink the ship, you get loot if you can get there before it goes totally underwater. Otherwise, yeah, if you wait too long, you lose it. Now, from memory, double shot drops off much sooner, as you might imagine. It's double shot, and I've just headed myself there into the wind. But that's okay, because so is he. But I need to turn around, because I can't actually bring my guns to bear, I'm at the wrong angle. He's actually got the upper hand here, um, because I kind of threw away so many good shots at him to uh, try and knock his sails out. I probably should have actually just not worried about that and gone straight for his hull. Yeah, that drops off pretty quick. Let him get a little closer. Wow, it really does drop off quick. Took a few hits there. Just a few. charge straight at him. Okay, he's going to turn around the inside. Good, good. Come closer. Oh, I still have manual sails on? How the fuck did I do that? Must have accidentally pressed the wrong button. Get fucked. I'll try and give him my left side as much as possible since my right's quite badly damaged at this point. If it seems like he's actually going to have a chance at killing me, I'll just disengage, I think, but... I should be able to eventually knock him down a few pegs, it's just gonna take a, a little while to do. I gotta be careful I don't beach myself over there as well.
Take out that cannon? Yeah, you can. Um, it's not that common though. I think you have to score pretty much a direct hit on it. So I don't really get a chance to do it a whole lot. Pop a crew repair. Get rid of the last that double shot. Oh, first it goes under, then it goes over. Of course. We go back to regular stuff. Side. I don't want to let him get too close. If he boards me, I'm in trouble. There we go, that's a pretty good broadside. Baited him right into it. I'll pretend I meant to do that. Problem with loading Grape Shot is it's really short range and I don't really want to get stuck with that loaded if he manages to get away from me like he's doing now. And also it's much more effective from behind and he's not really letting me get a good shot in here. He might. He might here let me get behind him, but not sure. Of course, having said that, he now gives me a beautiful side shot. Didn't time that very well, most of it bounced off the side, because it hit kind of a sketchy angle, but oh well. Kilo grape into the bow cannon and ball into the sides? Yeah, you can. Although my bow guns are smaller than my broadside guns, so there's not really much point. They're kind of pissy little fucking things. Okay, so he's going to turn into the wind again. Interesting strategy, let's see how it pays off. Doesn't mean he's going to get a pretty decent broadside into my already weakened right side, but we can live with that if it means getting one into his uh, his side as well. Boom! Two crew, one gun, and nine hits to the hull.
I'm getting a bit close to the shore here. New goal is not to fall asleep before I actually kill this guy. He's not doing too well anymore. He's still got more crew than me, slightly, so boarding is not an option yet, but he is uh, starting to hurt a little planking-wise. He might even beach himself before too long. like he's headed that way. Nine solid hits. into the water unfortunately. Ooh, I really need to not get any closer to the shore. Downswing. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and drag him further down the coast so I've got some maneuvering space. Yeah, my stern armor is pretty fucked, but that's alright. As long as I can get some distance between us. Should be right now. Unfortunately, I don't have any stern guns. I have two chasers. He has no chasers, but two stern guns. So, kind of balances out, I guess. But still, be nice to actually be able to shoot at him as he's pursuing me. space to manoeuvre. I was going to see if I could sneak in there, get a cheeky shot in. What I might do is I might have to force myself into the wind, take the shot, and turn back in towards the coast. Not ideal, but it might work. It's probably what he's going to have to do as well, to be honest. short, we'll aim for the top of his front mast and see how that goes. Bit short. There we go. No, no other hits out of that.
We're almost equal in crew, but it's still not enough advantage for me to consider boarding him. I've got another four and a half minutes before I can use another repair kit, so... We're gonna have to make what planking we have last, which means showing him my left side as much as possible, as opposed to my right. I'm gonna try and bait him out here. He's not disengaging at least, which is good. His rudder and pump are both damaged. His sails are fucked. So if I can draw him out here over this area of more open water, um, yeah, that will definitely work in my favour. That was miles off. I'll just let him get closer, I guess. As long as I'm not about to run myself aground here. Alright. Let's try that. One hit. I think he's looking for a chance here to turn broadside and try and hit me in the back. Which I really don't want him to do. Thankfully, he can't move very fast because I took his sails out earlier, so... It gives me a chance to get some distance between us and then turn and engage him. When I feel ready to do it. Again, trying to keep my left side to him. Okay, that's about on for elevation, it's just off for azimuth. Yeah, there go some hits. Not many, but some. It will do. AI. Yeah, I'm on the PvE server at the moment. Most players that are still playing this game, um, well, I mean new players maybe not so much, but a lot of the older players that joined when I did are going to be so much better at this, it wouldn't even be funny. Like, I would die immediately. Okay, we can afford to give him a bit of our right side here. Just a bit, because he's bow onto us, he can't hit us yet. I only got the one hit out of that. Once I hit those repairs, it should help me out a lot. I can play a little more aggressively with him then. I just don't want to risk getting a broadside and losing all my plank on my right side. Because that is when your ship starts filling up with water, and that is very bad. Very, very bad.
There we go. There's a few good hits. Oh, he's going to be on my right side, though. Uh-oh. Got our repairs up, thankfully. But it might not be quick enough to save us. I'll try and angle to minimize the damage as much as I can. Yeah, there we go. That's not bad. My turn. His right side is totally fucked. Unfortunately, I don't have a clear shot at it. Try and angle again just without heading myself into the wind. This is going to either really fuck him up or really fuck me up. I may have mistimed it. I think I'll be okay there. I'm going to cross behind him and fucking blast him. Get Wrecked. Haha, <laughs> he just lost his rudder. And now he's on my left side, which is my strong side. Yeah, he's in trouble. I'm probably going to sink him rather than board him, to be honest. Too risky trying to board him when our crews are this equal, and I can't really easily get behind him at the moment. Nine solid hits right there. So as you can see, this is a very slow-paced game. Some of these fights will draw out for well over an hour. Even just between two players, it can be even... Oh god. It can be even crazier when there's a, a whole heap of players. He might try and board here. I need to get away from him. If I'd had Grape Shot loaded there, that actually would have been really, really good. Hey, Boat! Yeah, that would make sense, given your name. Um, I started playing this when it first kind of hit, I think it was beta or something, but um, have been on a very, very extended break from it. So it's nice to get back in. Yeah, he's turned himself into the wind again. He can turn himself around, but... I think at this point he's having trouble with damage control, because his planking is basically gone, so he's going to be taking on quite a lot of water, I think. Yeah, you can see it. His gun deck is almost in the water at this stage. He's going to sink. Yeah, that would also make a lot of sense. Ooh. 
Oof. Swing and a miss from both of us. Yeah, he's going down. Glug, glug, motherfucker. There we go. He sunk. That's alright. I mean, I could have sold the ship, but I already have a navy brig, which I captured a couple of hours ago. I've captured two ships today. A navy brig and a um, privateer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this was just a battle between two fairly small ships. Um, you see a battle between, like, actual proper ships of the line with frigates in support, and those can go on for an hour and a half, two hours, easily. I had, um, when I first started playing this, I had a, a running battle. Um, I encountered Fly Daily, he was in a cutter, and I think I was in a yacht. And we had a running battle which lasted about probably 45 minutes or an hour just trying to maneuver in behind each other to get the um, the better shots I was actually kind of worried at the start of that fight, but it worked out all right. 276 XP. You get much more in the way of rewards on the PvP server. Oh my god, it's a pickle. Oh, I'm so tempted. I'm so, so tempted. Look at it. It's so small. I know it's basically beating up on children, but... I'm so tempted. I should probably go to bed, but we'll go fuck with this guy, I guess. What did you get from him? Um, trim by the stern, it's like a upgrade. Yeah, I've got a couple of screenshots from back when they introduced the port battles, and it's really awesome. I used to dive in between them while they were reloading in my little dinky fucking whatever it was I was driving then, I think it was like a brig or something. Just dive in between them, broadsides in every direction and then run away. What is bad about a pickle? Nothing, it's just small, so it's easy for me to beat up. Well, in theory, oh, actually in practice I probably should have sorted this damage out first. See, it's only a small ship and it doesn't have many guns, but I'm also missing a lot of planking, so I'm going to have to pop repairs right away. We'll go double shot, just because fuck this guy. No, the UI is way better than it was back then. It's not programmer graphics anymore, it actually has a proper UI. I almost feel bad for doing that. Actually, I'll go chain shot on my right side guns. hits out of that because double shot. I got too far away from him. Try and keep him on my left. 
like he is going to oblige with that. If I could just slow him down, I'd actually just board him. That was really not an effective broadside at all. Oh, the convergence on these guns drives me up a wall. That was nowhere near him. Whatever, I might just stop trying for his sails and just try and kill him outright. Or board him, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to be able to slow him down enough, though. So, to board someone, you both have to be below four and a half knots. You have to be very close to each other so you can pull each other in. If I can ram him, maybe, I might be able to slow us both down enough, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Oh, maybe here. Oh my god, I timed that so badly. So, so very badly. So, because he um, isn't a square-rigged ship, he can actually sail into the wind much better than I can. Which gives him a bit of a maneuverability advantage here. He's also faster, generally speaking. It does depend on the wind direction and things like that, but he is generally faster than I am. Wait for the downswing. That was a bit higher than I intended. I wanted to hit him right on the waterline. But it works. I think his guns are fairly weak too. Um, they look like three pounders. At most, like the biggest guns he's probably able to carry at all are six pounders, but I think those are three pounders. So, in a lot of cases, they're just going to bounce straight off my side anyway. A few good hits in there. I might go back to chain. Just try and slow him down. He's giving me a beautiful shot. Nice and far away, perfect for chain shot. Yeah, there we go. There we go, that had some effect. Saving my guns on my left side, since he's on my right at the moment, so I can load these ones faster. I'm pretty sure those are three pounders, so he's not even going to be able to get shells through me at that range. So I don't need to worry so much about showing my right side. Yeah, I loved watching a full broadside go from like a victory or something. It was just incredible. The sound, the fucking smoke, everything. Especially on the, um, like the shittier weather maps, or the, a, a battle in shittier weather, where it was lighting up the fog. It was just awesome. Okay, that was the last of our chain shot. He's really not doing anything to me. This is cruel. 
I mean, he actually does have the speed to run away if he wanted to. Mm, couple hits, not very good ones. We're gonna loop back in. And try and pop him with my left side. Uh, of course, now he's turning. Will grape shot damage the sails? Yeah, anything that hits the sails damages them. It just doesn't damage them as much as chain shot. So chain shot is your best anti-sail weapon. Um, grape shot is your best anti-crew weapon if you fire down the length of the deck. And ball is your general purpose fuck everything weapon. Um, then you've got double shot, which is for close range. Um, especially against ships which don't have very thick planking. And then double charge, which I think gives you more reach, like it... It shoots flatter. I don't know if it has better penetration, but I know it shoots flatter. So it's better for longer range engagements. Yeah, and Chain Shot can demast. Although, um, I don't think I've demasted anyone with Chain Shot for quite a long time. I don't seem to have very good luck with it. Wait for the downswing. Get fuck! Oh, you cheeky little fucking cunt! Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Just set the side of my ship on fire. That's cool. Still haven't put it out yet. That's slightly concerning. I hope that doesn't flash back to the magazine. That would be really, really bad. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone blow up for a very long time. I thought I was going to be treated to one the other day, but unfortunately, no. I'm just hoping I'm not the one that explodes here. Yeah, there we go. It's out. Here we go. Oh, it is time.
go with fire deck guns. I've because I've got him by the stern instead of alongside. I'm not having much effect by firing my actual guns. Um, if I was pulled up alongside him and I hit a broadside, he would just be fucked. His crew would be absolutely fucked. I just wanted to grab him there before he could get away from me again because he's too quick for me to catch otherwise, even with the sail damage. Uh, they've done a bunch of resets, so you might not still have them. Oh wow, that just totally fucking demolished them. There we go. What's he got on him? Additional brake pumps. Oh shit, 42 doubloons. Yeah boy. Do I want to keep that ship? Uh, I don't really need a pickle, so uh, he can get fucked. Bye bye. So that's um, two ships of today I've successfully captured and two I've sunk. But again, PVE, so, you know, not as impressive as it sounds. Now, where the fuck am I? Should be near Charleston, I think. Yeah, right outside Charleston. So I need to head into that inlet behind me. And then I think once I have docked, I am going to jump off because I need some sleep. Yeah, it has an actual proper UI now. So there's your chat and your friends list and everything in there. There's your world map with all your different options, your protractor which you can move around and shoot bearings with. Navy brig, again, there's a lot of navy brigs around here. Sorry about the clicking, by the way. I keep forgetting <laughs> forgetting that my mic is right next to where my mouse is, so it will pick it up. It's actually the reason I got rid of my noise gate, because it used to trip every time I moved the mouse anyway, so there was no point even having one. Battle damage, rather than use all my repair kits on it, I need to hire some more crew since I lost a bunch of men. There we go. And then um, I probably want to put some more repairs and stuff in here.
On the other hand, that is taking up a hell of a lot of my cargo space. Hmm. What upgrades have I got on this? Oh, put another upgrade on there. Extra hand pumps, yeah, I probably need that with how often I get shot full of holes. Oops, is that what I want in there? Yeah, I think I'll stick with pump training for now. There we go. Yeah. If I die, it's going to be thanks to my own stupidity. Um, if this was the PvP server, I probably wouldn't be taking anywhere near that much. I might take like a handful of repair kits because I would expect to die. Or, you know, fight one engagement and immediately go back to port. Well, I think that is me for the evening. So let's see who else is on. Stayed on a bit longer than I planned to, but that's all right. Um... Hmm. I think I know where I'll send you guys. Hopefully the host works. I know that hosts have been a bit glitchy lately. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.